Hello guys, I'm Shlok and you're watching Tech Burner. A brick or a boot loop happens when your phone doesn't boot up and it keeps repeating the same animation, the startup animation again and again. So there are two types of bricks. One is a soft brick and the other one is the hard brick. A soft brick happens when the phone is temporarily damaged and can be fixed. A hard brick, however, is difficult to fix and can only be fixed in certain situations. It is very rare for a hard brick to occur and hard bricks generally occur when people flash incompatible firmware like some people might flash the firmware of Lenovo onto the Moto G4 Plus or some people might flash the Samsung firmware on the Sony one and that can cause a hard brick because it's incompatible firmware and you are flashing it on the wrong phone. But generally most people know that and only soft bricks occur and soft bricks are very easy to fix. It's like when you install an app and the app is not compatible with your phone or it just doesn't work, then it will force close. It's same with the operating system also. When you install an operating system like custom ROM or the stock ROM or any ROM, if it's incompatible with your phone, it will not boot up and it will show you the animation again and again. It's like a way of saying for the ROM that it's force closing. So I have a list of methods that you can use to fix your phone if your phone is bricked or is boot looping. So let's start. So these are the six methods or I should say five methods because two of them are almost the same of fixing your phone which is bricked or is boot looping. These methods are not put randomly. These are in order and these are in order of difficulty and how they work. You have to choose only one of them and it will depend on the scenario which you are in. With each and every one, I will try to explain which in which scenario you have to use that. So the topmost one is like the most easiest one and the one on the bottom is the most difficult. And one thing to be noted is that the first three on the list will remove your data but the three on the bottom will not remove your data. The list is also ordered in a way that the one on the bottom has the least chances of working and the one on the top has the highest chances of working. So suppose if you want like a solid fix for your phone and you don't care about your data, you'll have to choose the one on the top. And if you really want your data and you're ready to do some technical things, you can choose the three on the bottom. So we'll start with the first one itself. The first one is flashing your ROM via fastboot or Odin or flash tool or anything like that. So I can't tell you the exact procedure of flashing stock ROM on your phone. But what I can tell you is how to find it and what is the basic procedure. It differs for different phones. For Samsung, you have the bootloader mode and Odin. For Motorola, you have the fast boot mode. For Sony devices, you have the flash tool. For many MTK based devices, you have the MTK Droid tools. And it differs for every phone. So you'll have to search on Google and I will show you how you can do that. So the things that you have to type on Google would be your phone's model number. Mine is Motorola XT1643. So I will type Moto G4 Plus XT1643. Then stock ROM. And then I have to type fast boot. Or if you are using a Samsung phone, you can type Odin. If you're using a Sony phone, you can type flash tool. And I will type fast boot. And then at the end, you have to type XDA. XDA is a developer community forum. And it's a very trusted website. So you will find great tutorials there. If you still can't find it, you can also search on XDA directly. It will definitely give you a tutorial on XDA forums on how you can restore stock ROM on your phones. So before we flash stock ROM on your phones, you'll have to make sure that if you are on Nougat, then you have to flash a Nougat stock ROM. If you are on Marshmallow, then you have to flash a Marshmallow stock ROM. For some phones, it might be possible that there are different versions of Android available and you have different stock ROMs. So you'll have to flash the one that you are currently on right now. So you'll have to download some files from the thread like uh, the Odin files or the fast boot files and the firmware file. It would be different for each phone. So you'll have to be very phone specific. Don't flash any other file that is not for your phone. So the basic workflow will be like this. First, you'll have to set up MFAST boot or Odin on your computer. You might have to install the software. So I will show you how you can set up MFAST boot on your computer. I'll try to make it quick. I'm setting up MFAST boot because I'm using a Motorola device. If you're setting up a Samsung device, you'll have to use Odin and it would be different for each phone. So you'll have to figure out. 
the procedure should be in the XDA thread itself. So I'll quickly set up mfast boot and I will show you how you can do that. The thing is you don't have to do much. You just have to extract the zip file and copy it in the C directory. And that's it. Now you have set up mfast boot and all you have to do is extract the firmware and copy the files in here. And uh, don't forget to install drivers before doing this. You will generally find the drivers on the Samsung site or the Motorola site. And you will also find them in the XDA thread. And after you're done setting up everything on your computer, you'll have to power off your phone and open it in the flash mode or bootloader mode or as the manufacturer calls it. In Moto G4 Plus, it's called bootloader mode. So first you'll have to power off your phone. And after your phone is powered off, to open your phone in bootloader mode, there would be various key combinations for every phone. But for the Moto G4 Plus, you'll have to press the power button and the volume down button for around 2 seconds. So now this is the bootloader mode. After you have opened your phone in bootloader mode or Odin mode or whatever you want to call it, you will have to connect it to your computer. You will have to follow the procedure given by the thread itself and not go exactly by how I am doing it because I am doing it for my Moto G4 Plus. So on the computer, the basic workflow is like this. You will have the firmware files. You will have to put them on your phone via the software that is given to you. So for me, it's mfastboot. So I have to open a command prompt window and enter all these commands one by one. And then I will have stock ROM on my phone when I reboot it. For Samsung phones, Odin might have a visual interface and you will have to select the files one by one from that interface by uh, selecting them. And it might be the same for Sony and other phones as well. So we'll have to take one more possibility into consideration. Suppose if you're running no good and you got the official OTA and there is no stock ROM available for your phone for no good and you only have the marshmallow stock ROMs, then you'll have to search on Google on how to downgrade your phone from no good to marshmallow. So right now on my Moto G4 Plus, I'm running no good and to downgrade, I've made a video. You can follow that. So like right now on my Moto G4 Plus, so if I mess up my phone, I can follow the downgrade procedure to downgrade directly from no good to marshmallow and it will fix my phone. And if you're using a Moto G4 Plus and uh, you need to downgrade your phone to fix your phone, you can follow a video. I will link it in the card section. Don't follow if you're not having the Moto G4 Plus, please. So before moving on to the next one, if you're finding this video useful, you can click on the subscribe button below because I'll be making more videos like this and I will also be helping you guys if you have any problems. The second one is restoring your ROM via recovery mode. So I'll quickly show you how you can open your phone in recovery mode. Actually it differs for every phone but I will show you for my phone. You have to open your phone in bootloader mode. Then open it in recovery mode. So whenever you flash a custom ROM, people ask you to make a backup of your ROM. I will show you how you can make a backup. The interface of your recovery might be different, but my recovery looks like this. You will always have a backup option and where you will select, you will have to select the system data and other partitions. You, you can select all of them if you want and then click on backup. So if you had backed up your ROM, this is how you can restore your ROM. You'll have to go to the restore menu. By the way, I'm using TWRP recovery and you'll have to select the backup and then restore everything. This will restore all the data that was on your phone and it will also restore the apps and delete the current apps and data and restore everything that was there back then. And that's why people say that you should make a backup of your phone before flashing a custom ROM or anything because it's so easy to restore and it hardly takes a minute or two. And this is the easiest method of restoring your ROM. So the third one on the list is flashing the ROM again via recovery. So I've already opened my phone in recovery mode and to reflash your ROM, you'll have to follow the instructions that you used to flash your ROM in the first place. This will delete all the data that you have like the, your apps and other data, but it won't delete your uh, data on the internal SD card or your SD card. So you'll first have to wipe your phone. So the basic workflow is almost the same for all the flashing processes of all custom ROMs. So you'll have to wipe the Dalvik cache, the data, the cache, and in some cases, you'll also have to wipe the system. You will have to take all of them and then swipe to wipe. I will not do this because I don't want to wipe my data, but I will just show you guys. So the next thing you want to do after that is install the custom ROM. So you'll have to select your custom ROM 
and then select swipe to wipe or however your recovery works and in most custom roms you don't have google apps pre-installed so you'll have to uh, install a google apps package also so then you have to install it's basically the same procedure as reinstalling your custom rom so this is useful if you have uh, installed a custom rom and made some changes to the rom and it stopped working and if you installed a rom that is not booting up you can install another custom rom by this method so as i said earlier the fourth one on the list will not delete your data at all and it would only delete the system partition and flash it again so you, if you have installed any apps in the system partition like if you have installed any system apps then it would delete them and reinstall the default apps again this might not work in all cases viper fx for android or a rai sound system or if you have flash some scripts or something or if you have installed a boot animation or if you've just made any changes to the system and your phone has stopped working then you can do this method so you'll ha just have to follow the same procedure that you use for flashing your custom rom but one thing you won't do is wipe your data you'll just have to directly flash your custom rom and what this will do is that it won't delete your data it will override the system files with the default ones and in many cases this works this will also work if you've installed a kernel and your phone has gone into boot loop mode because this will also flash the stock kernel again so we'll move on to the next one this is very similar to the previous one just because you are restoring everything in the system partition but there is one difference you are not restoring the boot img so what you will have to do is this will only work if you have already created a backup as i showed you earlier how you can create a backup you'll have to restore that backup so while restoring the backup you'll have to take only the system partition so what that will do is only restore the system files it will keep your data intact and everything else intact this also works for the same cases the previous one worked for so like if you have made any changes to the system like installed a system app or installed viper for fx for android or install expose framework or install any root app that is not working on your phone and then you just have to swipe to flash so you can also use this to flash your uh, kernel as well and to do that you will have to tick on the boot icon uh, i mean the boot text and then swipe to flash this will flash the stock kernel on your phone the boot actually means the kernel so yeah that was it and uh, let's move on to the last one and that is the fix manually one so the last one is manually fixing your rom or the problem that you have created so in some cases you make a certain mistake or you do something that ends up your phone in boot loop and you don't know how to fix it so what you could do is revert back the changes that you have made so like if you have installed a boot animation and the boot animation is not working anymore and your phone is in a boot loop what you could do is you could go to the recovery screen and then use the advanced option then go to the file manager and here you could remove the uh, boot animation and restore the previous boot animation by copying that from the file manager i will show you how you can do that so uh, let's say i have another boot animation or you have the stock boot animation in your sd card then you can copy this and you can replace the older boot animation which is not working by the one that is working so you will have to go to system media and then copy it here i won't do it because i already have the previous boot animation but it works like that you have to know what the problem is to fix it so suppose you have installed expose framework and expose is not working and your phone is in boot loop what you could do is use the uninstaller zip provided by expose and uninstall expose framework from your phone or if you have made some changes like installed an app or something you could delete that app by using the file manager that is given in the recovery screen so you have to be able to improvise to make all these changes and you should know what's happening to actually make these that's why it's this is the toughest method and i don't advise you on doing this unless you actually know what you're doing but in some cases like when in the expose cases or or when the developers provide you with the uninstaller you can definitely go for it because it won't delete your data and everything will be safe your phone will just be fixed it is actually the best method but it's kind of tough and if this video helped you guys and you were able to fix your phone don't be afraid to try out new mods because you can always come back to this video and fix your phone so i have a various list of videos on my channel you can watch that and i will see you in the next video